Hello there, people of the internet. This is Dialogues with Jagero. I am your host, Odur Jagero, and today we are going to be talking about should you buy a house, should you rent one, or should you? Always. Yeah, right. it is It is buy, rent, or bill, yes. Should you buy, buy a house, yes. should you rent a house, should you Should you build? Yes. My guest is Innocent Omundi, practicing real estate in the United States of America, correct? Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming to the program the second time. How are you doing? Excellent. Relax. You've been in Kenya for some time. How is Kenya treating you? I love it here. I'm home every day, all day. Yeah. I love it. All right. Great. Uh, I had always wanted to own a home in Nairobi. That dream is slipping through my fingers. Mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons why it's slipping through my fingers is because I've decided to build in the village. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I do not think that I'll be staying in Nairobi in the next 10 or so years. You know, I shall have gone to the village to live there uh, next to my grandfather's grave and and retire there. You know, mostly it's probably we'll be having a dialogue with Jagero will still going on there. Mm -hmm. You know, I can always come to Nairobi. Shall have created a media empire. Yes. Coming to Nairobi in my personal heli. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I love it. I love it. You know, hosting people in Nairobi and getting back yes. to the village. Yes, yes. You know, I saw that. I want to be had to have my ostriches in I the village. <laughs> <laughs> we are having the right conversation at the right time. We just need to choose the ostriches now. Yeah. Yes, yes. And have my lake. I saw a lake on 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 Facebook. Lake Nyaboli. Yes. Yeah. That was one. Yeah. What is your assessment of the real estate industry? Um. So real estate industry is in Kenya is is as as all as you know I've, I've practiced majorly in the US. Yeah. So most people know me as innocent their realtor, uh, but uh, I've taken a keen interest in real estate in Kenya. Uh, uh, my first assessment is that um, a housing a housing is a need that will always be there, whether you're renting, whether you buy. Or whether you're building one, it's going to be probably what consumes about 30% of most people's income going out. And that's if you're doing well. So it's a necessity. It's something that needs to be addressed at all times. Um, your question is a good one. And it's in, in the right time now since we were, a lot of conversation is going on now about uh, what's called the dead capital or whatever. Well, that was quite interesting. But... Uh, in the real sense, uh, real estate in Kenya. Let's, let's talk about dead capital. Okay, <laughs> dead capital. <laughs> what is you? What is? What do you think about? You know, uh, when I was building my house in the village, one of my cousins say, "Me, I can't build such a huge house in the village. Why can't I? I'll start with rentals." Mm-hmm. But I, di- I didn't see him owning any rentals. Mm-hmm. He also doesn't have a house in the village. Yeah, yeah. So, when people say dead. Dead capital, they mean that you've built a house in the village that is not giving you anything back. Yes. And they assume that that's a bad thing. They assume that's a bad thing. I think mainly that comes from the idea that any house you build should always generate income. Yeah. But uh, if you are a traditional person, you understand that a man of a certain age at some point was traditionally obligated to have a home. So it's the home was not to build money for you. The home was to ground you and to say, here is Jagero. And Jagero's, this is where his roots are. So dead capital or not, that's a conversation that shouldn't be there. I think uh, that comes from people who are thinking about uh, uh, building a 4x10 and Mogondas and Kafloti type of energy. But I also think that it is very simplistic. It is a very simple and, and 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 it talks into our ignorance. Yes. Because, for example, if I am a billionaire yes. in Kenya shillings mm-hmm. and I have got thirty units in Mombasa, mm-hmm. I've got twenty units in Nairobi, yes. I've got two units in Kisumu. Mm-hmm. That's not dead capital. That's not dead capital. You see, I have made a profit mm-hmm. and I am now saying I want to have a home in the village. Yes. So why is somebody insisting that that one in the village also has to be generating income? Yeah, it's it, it comes from a, a mentality of, of lack of knowledge. Mm. Uh, anytime you build a house, anybody knows that um, anytime you put a structure above ground, you're improving the value of that property. 
even if it was something that you'll never sell, the value is still there. Uh, the value could be just based on on a uh, um, uh, form utility. It could be based on utility of use. Uh, and now t- times are changing. You know, it's time now where actually people, there are people in this Nairobi who have never even experienced the Ushago experience. They don't have a home. And uh, most of them actually people within Nairobi environments, uh, environs, they don't have homes. They don't have Ushago because land was long gone. So it could be important and probably an experience if people can really go and experience on Ushago. Um, post post 2020 or post corona now we are seeing that there are different kinds of businesses mm. uh, people can do business at home you could work in that dead capital of yours and work somewhere outside the country in america you could do all kinds of things from what is considered as dead capital but um, i personally encourage uh, people to continue building away from bigger cities because there's more space the air is cleaner there's better food uh, the land is a rebel and you can actually build things with vision without having to worry about what your neighbor is building down the street. So uh, I don't see anything as dead capital. I don't believe in it. I think it's just a, a human character. There's always something somebody will say. You said something earlier. If you don't build, they say, oh, these people are driving big cars and sleeping in great thatch houses. Yes. If you build too big, it's dead capital. Yeah. So there's no winning. But uh, like you say, your uncle who said that he was going to build uh, his uh, Kapango, the, the rental ho- properties, never built the rentals or the home. Yeah. There is your answer. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you are giving us uh, an overview of, of, of the industry. Yes. Mm-hmm. One of the thing that I feel about real estate is that it is highly overpriced in the cities. Yeah. The building materials have really gone up mm-hmm. and... Uh, a lot of people, even the middle class, can hardly afford a building. Yeah. All they can afford is renting. And even renting, there are very specific areas where they can rent. Yeah. You very, know? Yeah. If you take Lovington, for example, Karen, for example, mm-hmm. it leaves, it is the upper middle class that you'd find there. Mm-hmm. You know? And then uh, now it goes up and up and up and up and everybody else is remaining here mm-hmm. with... Uh, with property that is not good, like people, like most of the the houses we have, mm-hmm. you don't have the luxury of cold and hot water. Mm-hmm. You only have one pipe. Uh, the other day, I was asking my landlord, "How could you have built a house without 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 two pipe? Without I, I don't know what you call it. Yeah. What do you call it in 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 building where there is a there there is a there is a there is a there is a pipe for cold water and there is a pipe for cold water. What is it called? It's just actually hot and cold water. Actually, they are just coded. You'll see one that is hot. It shows usually is in red pipes sometimes and one in blue pipes. Uh, but um, it's just a necessity uh, that maybe we are continuing the long path. Most of the houses were built in Nairobi originally. It was just to house a few uh, people who, are, who helped the British people at that time administer. They were very um, survivalist, you know, and uh, it seemed like we actually s- took what w- was being built for uh, people, the Askaris at that time, or just an administration, somebody without even a wife, because there were rural reserves. So main homes were there. The British built these small efficiency things so that they're able to just have a post office, have a clerk somewhere, live in this place. But that became the model how Kenyans now build their homes and land is. But real homes are not built in those sizes and dimensions. They're not built without hot water and cold waters. So this was just something we inherited that was supposed just to, to work for a certain number of years just when these people were able to come and extract. Uh, it was very survivalist. Mm. For, for, yeah. so that, and, uh, you know, we, we've inherited it and it seemed to be the standard. Mm. Yeah. In the United States where you are, they, they don't use brick and mortar. They don't. They don't and, use and, brick and, and I don't understand it because they have got a lot of typhoons and strong winds. Yes, yes. And the fact that they don't they don't use brick and mortar is something that I've never understood. What is the reasoning behind building your houses using boxes? Yeah, yeah. so uh, um, so part of the reason why it is built that way is because in America there are very active season changes. There is the cold season the hot season. 
So there is winter, there is summer, there is spring, and there is autumn. Uh, the first two ones, the winter and summer, are two very different ones. So if you are to build a house in brick and mortar, that house will be so cold, it would cost so much money to heat it. Oh, yeah? To warm it up okay. in winter. So uh, they wanted something that is is more of a, a um, not uh, something that does not conduct heat that easily or that does not retain cold as brick. Brick and mortar will keep the house very cold throughout the year. Uh, so that is how they realize. Now in summer, if you build your house uh, with uh, anything other than than wood, it takes so long to cool it down to. Okay. So it was a matter of just managing the temperature that mm. made America realize, okay, we, we are going to build our houses using prefabs or concrete mat- materials. And it's, it's, it's a lot cheaper, it's quicker to build. And, that's and too, then I realized that uh, if you're building in America and building in Germany, they always tell you in America that this house is going to take this long. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, very, they're, they're very up to a point to when they can deliver your house. If we are building a house in six months, it's six months straight. There may be exceptions when maybe the house may take a little longer, but uh, uh, it's usually not too far off the mark. Mm. It's because everything is already pre, pre-built, like windows are already, they come, they're just installed. You don't have to come up there and install anything. So they can really figure out when one thing comes, what is installed, they literally have it to a science. Mm. Yeah. What are some of the things that you look at in, Amer- in, the, in the real estate in America yes. and say that this is where I think America is still lagging behind, but I think America has taken several steps ahead of each and every one. For example, if you compare Kenya mm-hmm. and America, mm-hmm. uh, what are some of the things that Kenya can learn from America? Yeah. What are some of the things that America can learn from Kenya? How do they differ? Because I know that now mm-hmm. you are you are encroaching into our into our real estate you know industry. You want yes, to you want yes. to understand it. You want to be there. Yes, but having having part. seen how it works, yeah. looked at, looked around, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that you're saying? Well, I have I've seen this happening in the U.S. and I think it is something that that could be imported here. Yes. Something that is that is happening here that I think can be imported that can be exported to that to the other to the other to the other side. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I think there are several things. Uh, the first part of it would be more financial. Um, America has actually, the, the banking industry in America has uh, categorized different types of loans. So there's actually construction loan, there's actually mortgages specific just for homes. And those usually would be, uh, if you're getting a mortgage from uh, a bank, uh, it could be something between maybe 1% to about 5 or 6%. In Kenya right now, I think it's about maybe 17, maybe higher. And it's consistently been that way. So um, I think if we are able to, to, in Kenya, to reduce the amount of interest they charge for mortgages so that somebody can get a loan specifically for buying a home, and it's charged much lower, and maybe it's government-backed, that would help home ownership in this country. And we terribly need it. Um, that is the one thing that I know would make a big change. As a matter of fact, um, America did have that problem for a long time, up until maybe uh, President Clinton's time. And he kind of broadened it a little further. So we can definitely do better in Kenya in terms of making sure that loans are actually accessible. The home is there. You can attach it if you need to, uh, but make uh, loans that are actually just specific for homes. And uh, you, you have to, we just can't have a blanket 12% for homes. Or, you know, it has to be creative and there has to be creative packages. That would help. As far as infrastructure of building a home, uh, I also think government should be involved because it's a government problem. It's the most basic need, the number one basic need is housing. Uh, maybe after food, right? Uh, I think housing in America uh, has been growing, but the one thing that I notice is different is that the the basic infrastructure of building a home, it's actually backed somehow by government. It's controlled by government. So if there's, let's say, a land in Kiambu that is supposed to be developed, or a land in Luonyanza, or let's say Homa Bay, the government will have some people to open up the land the first two things they'll do is to make sure that they build access for sewage 
that is done by when you're buying land it already has sewage already done in it and it has access roads uh, so that when you're coming to buy as Jagero, you're coming to buy a piece of land, it already has these other bigger things. Because think about if you buy a house, then you have to work on your drainage system. You're just going to take it right outside your house and that's it. And guess what? If we do that, if we don't have lands that are being sold with infrastructure already in them, in infrastructure I mean sewage already lined, hot, I mean cold water lined, uh, telephones lined, we are going to build... Uh, slums, pretty much. We are building slums whether we like it or not. So anytime you build a home, the first things you build is the sewage and the water and then the access roads. And I think those are such big infrastructure that someone like an individual cannot afford to do. You can afford to buy land, but you can't afford to run those particular facilities. So it's for government uh, to actually come in, whether it's county government uh, and national government, to make sure that those infrastructures are actually part of what government funds for any land they sell. So that way we have an, a, 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 um, you know, a top-bottom type of approach. You see what I mean? Yeah. What I don't understand about it, for example, mm. let's say, for example, you want to build a long gong road. Yes. And the, the, the road going to, to that particular property... Let's say you want to do 30 units. Yes. And there is no proper road going there. Mm -hmm. There is no sewerage system connecting that place. There, there is no water connecting it. Mm -hmm. How does that process start in the United States? Do you go to the government and petition them that, look, I want to build, but I don't have these things. Mm -hmm. how, how, do, how, does this, how do you start doing it? Yeah, it's the other way around in America. Every, and even in Kenya, every... A city has a, a, a roadmap and and where residential should be, where industrial parks should be. It's only that we jump that line. For you to build sustainable communities, you have to actually have this infrastructure already in point. So if you were to build a 30 unit, you're not going to build in an industrial area. First of all, the permits won't allow you. Yes. They don't allow that. Uh, for example, if you're to build like in this area here, there's a sewage already that's established, but that sewage cannot hold 30 units. So that way, when you come to this area, you'll find out, look here, you cannot build in this area because the parameters of how much density of drainage was already already put in paper. So in America, they will look, if they are going to build an apartment for like, let's say 30 units apartment, they're going to, 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 to lay down this drainage, they're going to lay out enough road worth, you know, for transportation, enough power, every single thing will be already laid down. Then now you can now go and invest on those. So there's somebody whose job is just to do this thing. So when you buy land, it comes already with the cost of these things. Yeah. Mm. And uh, they're not paid up front. So it's, it's, for example, if you buy a piece of land in America and you're improving a property there, uh, you will find that there's something called front foot uh, front foot benefits. So those front foot benefits are your drainage, are your sewage, and uh, your internet. So the person that that built those uh, was paid already, and then you're going to pay in your mortgage every year you'll see something like maybe $1,000 every year towards this. Most of them run for between 15 to 20 years, and you shall have paid the cost of sewage. But it's an extra annually or maybe twice a year payment that comes from your general... Uh, ownership of the home. But then that that is very problematic because I don't think that was designed mm -hmm. uh, to it wasn't designed like to happen like that in Nairobi. Because I because right now what is happening for example Lovington which used to just mm -hmm. have condos yeah. and mansion it mm -hmm. and now you go there and you find that somebody has put up like a 16 story building yeah. which has got 100 units. Yeah. I don't understand. Do you think that the government or the city council of Nairobi, or the, 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 the government of Nairobi, has the capacity to, to know what this area needs or what should happen in this area? Yeah. Because I feel like there are houses that are coming up that are not supposed to be coming up. Yes. Good question. Um, the, um, the Nairobi city has a blueprint of what is where what that particular piece of land can hold. They have that. 
they already, it's already in paper, they know it. We just choose to look the other way. Uh, most of these homes that you're seeing that are being built now, uh, you have to understand this is also a problem in other places. But most of it kind of was people would buy homes with big money would just come from in America, they'll call it dark money. They would buy a place like this, clear these homes and build uh, uh, like stories houses, like five story houses. Uh, the reason why that is happening is because partly in Nairobi is there are people who are actually cleaning money. So you build this, uh, you build a house that's probably now a building that's probably is five stories with six units on each other part or something bigger. Uh, people are using that to clean money. Uh, they are showing this is uh, where the money went. And then from there on, now they can borrow money using that building and their money is clean that they borrow. So that has been happening in the U.S. It's also happening here. But yes, uh, the, the city council of Nairobi <laughs> knows exactly who is doing what at what time. Mm. Yeah. I, I want to build a house mm -hmm. or I want to rent yeah. or I have the choices of either building, mm -hmm. renting yeah. or um, building, renting or what? What is the What was the, th the third thing? You could build, you mm. could rent mm. and uh, you could buy. You could buy. Yes. Yes. What are some of the things? Let's start with, uh, let's start with, with buying. Yeah. What are the, the disadvantages of buying a house and the advantages of buying a house? Yeah. The advantages of buying a house is, 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 first of all, that your house at some point will gain equity. Now, the disadvantage of buying it is you're buying it from somebody who's looking to make profit. So you're paying somebody money. If you built it yourself, you possibly would have paid less. But because somebody is selling houses for a living, they make money on you. So that is just maybe the, <laughs> the quick and short of it. Mm. Uh, but I do think... Um, um, maybe it's a bit cumbersome to build because it takes a lot of know-how. Uh, so most people feel discouraged and they feel like, hey, I can just buy a house. But uh, I personally encourage especially people to, to build. Uh, get land, uh, design what you want and build it. Mm. Um, if you're going to buy some of these houses that I'm seeing in Nairobi, you have to be very careful about what we are talking about, <coughs> population density. If all these houses we see now, say in places like Kilimani, if they are fully occupied, water is being run in sewage and everything, very soon <coughs> we're going to have an issue because the, uh, uh, the drainage system of this area was not designed to carry uh, a, 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 you know, apartment blocks of 500 families you know, continuously. Even when you're just leaving the gate, just the outside road, the, the feeder roads, are always bumper to bumper. Why? Because you're not supposed to have 15 houses trying to live in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. You have almost 30 houses trying to live one apartment block. And you have the, the traffic there. So you already see traffic congestion. You already have issues with drainage. You already have issues with, with power. So um, I would advise people to be very careful in terms of where they're buying and to know that down the line, somebody can sell you something now but down the line, it may never be sustainable to even live there because it will be just too congested. You know, we are parking too many people in a very small space, and I don't think it's sustainable for the building costs or for even somebody looking to make a profit. Mm. But then if you want to build your own house, mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are the factors you should consider? What are the questions that you need to ask yourself? Yeah. Because, for example, Mimi, the first question I'll be asking myself if I were to build in Nairobi mm -hmm. We, is I mean, I don't know the owner of this land. The people that are trying to sell me this land, I don't know them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're the, the same owners of this land. Mm -hmm. Because you can search for land today, you get the name Innocent as the owner of the <laughs> land. You search it next week, you get mm -hmm. uh, you, you get George. Mm -hmm. You search it three months later, you get, you get a Livingstone. Mm -hmm. So I think those, for me, that is the biggest uh, problem. 
that you'd first encounter while trying to buy mm -hmm. uh, land here in Nairobi in order to build your own houses. I'm also, I also know that if you go outside Nairobi, then it is easier. Probably the person selling the land is the real owner of that, of that land. But I think that is, just, that, is just, that is just one of the issues that you can deal with in as far as building is concerned. But having been in real estate for some time, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that somebody should ask themselves before they, they, they build a house? Uh, yeah, uh, affordability is always the first thing. Affordability is very, very important. Secondly, the land you're owning, does it have any encumbrances? Encumbrances are things like the ownership of land. Uh, is it clean and clear title? Can you build this house and know that 10 years down the line, nobody's going to show up and say, oh my God, this is my father's land or this is my land. Uh, those are very, very important because land is very emotive and it's an issue that can, can absolutely vex people in, in society. Uh, another thing is the use of uh, you know how old are you and let's let's talk about let's go back to this to the first factor that you've talked about how does it uh, do you, is this very straightforward in america it's very straightforward affordability right no 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 the fact that this land is actually the person trying yes. to sell me this, this land yeah. is the owner of the land yeah it's very straightforward and not only is it that way um there is something that they do it's called a title work a title work uh is uh, as such of the property thoroughly done by law offices or some law entity. And with that, they actually give you a title. This is called a, a title of guarantee uh, or title of, 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 of clean, a clean title. When they give you a clean title, it's literally kind of like an insurance. If the title turned up down the line that it was not, then these particular people are going to actually pay you the cost of, of or any cost that... Uh, you have gone. Let's say you are losing your property, or let's say there's some litigation that was involved, and now you have to come out of money of your pocket. All those things would be cured there. So in America, they've had, they have a system where title work has to be done. Before I give keys to my clients, I make sure that they have a clean title of a property. And if it's not clean, which is very rare that that can happen, there's actually a backup which means you are buying title from the insurance company and the insurance company will pay if there's an issue with it. So that has helped uh, cure part of that issue in America. That's very interesting when you talk mm -hmm. about ins getting insured for the land yeah, that, that you're you buying. Yes. So are you, are you insuring the deal or you are insuring... The title. The title. Yes. Okay, so this is how it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy is selling me this land. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pay so much dollars for it. Let's say I'm paying three hundred thousand yes. dollars to buy this land. Mm -hmm. I have gotten the title deed, yes. but I don't stop there. I walk up to the insurance company mm -hmm. and tell the insurance company, "Look, I have been sold this thing, but I don't know what might crop up in the next three years. Mm -hmm. I want to insure this, yeah. so that if if there is litigation or if or if I'm of building on government land or whatever mm -hmm. happens, then you will." You will pay me. What does the insurance then look at before yeah. they they decide that okay, this is something we're going to take up? Yeah. So in America, that's an inbuilt process in America. For you to buy a house, you have to have title. It comes with it. The insurance does not even have to. <laughs> you don't even have to go to the insurance. You just literally choose uh, an insurance type, and it's generated in the somebody. It's naturally there. It exists. Oh, you don't. You don't. You. No. You. You. It is not. Yes. It is not. It's not something that you. That you. You don't go looking for insurance for it. So now there. Are, there are places where, let's say, there are places like uh, floods, flood zone areas where some insurance would just be like, yeah, we are not trying to insure that, but that is insurance of the property itself and the improvement. Uh, but the title company, uh, <clears throat> a title always comes with every sale of a property in America. It must have a clean title for, it, for you to be able to sell it, which means before they see the, the clean title, nobody can sign anything. Mm. So every, every transaction in America that's done... Uh, and, and clean title means that uh, the lawyers have gone through, yes. investigated it, <clears throat> yes. you know, looked, at, looked, at, looked at every corner of it mm -hmm. and decided that this, the title actually belongs to... Yeah. To innocent. Yeah. What and are they? Well, do you know what these lawyers are looking looking for when yeah. they are when they are investigating? They are looking at issues of ownership, previous. Uh, they are also looking at any loans that might have been 
uh, attached to the property, they're looking at liens. If somebody did work for you and you never paid them, it could be deeded there. They're looking at taxes that were owed previously if they've been paid before. They're looking at uh, the type of ownership that was there before. Does it allow you to sell this property in this manner? Uh, so it's several several aspects of, of the title health that they look at. Mm, yeah. Amazing. Do you know if they do that in Kenya? I don't think we do much of that. I think in Kenya, it's simply, I know so-and-so, and so-and-so has land. And uh, when you go to the lands people, they have all the control. You can find three or four titles to one land. So I think one of the things that we need to straighten up in Kenya is to really come with one way of really identifying every piece of land, almost uh, like a DNA of this land. Somebody was telling me that the only way to deal with land in Kenya is to go the crypto way. To create, I, I, uh, like to, a, to okay, create okay. identifiers yes, that yes. nobody can change. Yeah, you you must change it when when the he was talking about the owner has a piece of that information. Mm -hmm. The land, the government has got a piece of that information, and without these two people mm -hmm. uh, coming to the table, then you can't change the identifier. So I thought, I thought that That's is interesting. That is very, very That's interesting. Very interesting. Because he said that the reason why it is very, very, very difficult to to rain on 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 the land on the land ministry mm -hmm. is because they are basically cartels and crooks. Yeah. And anything that you save on a computer can always be changed. If it's a name, it can be changed. If it is if it is a title number, it can be changed. Mm -hmm. Basically, anything in a registry yeah. in a database yeah. can be changed. Mm -hmm. So he was like, digitization won't make this thing difficult because in any case, digitization means that anybody anywhere mm -hmm. with internet and has got the correct access yeah. can always change this thing. As a matter of fact, he was saying mm -hmm. that you would not even sometimes need the land registry to corrupt the fa the, the database. Oh, you can actually get the services of a, of a black hat hacker to get into that system, change it for the duration that you want, say that, okay, wow. these guys are going to be searching this land mm -hmm. within within this month. Mm -hmm. And within that month, the name, the title did everything will be reading somebody else's name. When that is done and the land has been sold, they just return there the way they entered and changed the name back to the original owner. When you go back after they have sold you the land, you go there and do another search and you find that the original owner has been reinstalled. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a matrix level type of thing. But yes, uh, yeah. I can see how, how uh, your friend's suggestion could be a suggestion that maybe is the suggestion mm. of the day now. You know, uh, I think uh, land issues in, in Kenya has continued to be an, to be uh, persistent and there is need to be actually a way to ever consolidate it and and maybe have proper identifiers like you've said that are very uh direct to a geographical location where you cannot change it mm. yeah so uh, i think that is definitely maybe you should work on that that could be yeah yeah, yeah 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 and then and then we talk, we were talking about we were talking about building yeah uh you have you have gotten the title deed. Uh, a lot of people are are wondering: Should I use uh, what? Should I use? Should I use uh, bricks? Should I use uh, you know uh, prefabs? Mm -hmm. Should I, what should I use? I mean, how do you get into the level where you're saying this is what this is the material I should use? This is the material I shouldn't use, yeah. and blah blah blah. Yeah, I think I think in Kenya we we probably we should should encourage uh, the newer technologies of of building. Uh, prefabs are a thing that are happening in most part of the country, most part of the world, and I think uh, we are a bit slow at adapting other ways of, of building in Kenya. And um, as long as we, we, we maintain that way, building material is going to continue to be very expensive. But if we have other options, there's, there's even um, uh, options where people are using like uh, kind of like trailer. Uh, you've seen the, the, what is that called? I'm forgetting the name here, but uh, where people are using uh, like sheep materials, they and they build houses from it, even in America. Uh, so, as long as we are entertaining that brick and mortar is the only way we are going to build a house, it's always going to be a lot of demand on it. It's going to be always expensive. So, I encourage any, but prefab is the number one that I see a lot of people are using, especially in construction of big businesses. Um, if you see how the Chinese are building, 
mainly in China, you'll notice that a lot of things are already pre-made. So it's just a house comes up, the wall is already made, you just put in a crane and fix it, and the next, next thing, it's bolts and nuts and the house is upcoming. Quicker way to do it, cheaper, it's an industrial way to do it. So um, I don't think we are there yet, but I've seen a few people in Kenya who actually have prefab type of industry, and it's, it's picking up. Um, brick and mortar is still, <laughs> still king. Uh, stones. Um, uh, so I, I personally, someone who's in real estate, I would really encourage uh, diversity in terms of trying to to build with all kinds of material. We we have to we have to break through the mold of these brick and mortar. It's expensive. Mm. Yeah, it's very expensive. Mm. Uh, so so you choose you choose whether you're going to be using bricks. Uh, how about the other things in the house? Mm. Some of the things that you should be looking out uh, for when you're building a house. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it depends usually with person, people's style. But uh, for example, if you're telling in America, what makes a house a hot cake is usually the kitchen, uh, the bathrooms. Mm. The bathrooms are a big addition in a house. Even here in Nairobi, if you build a house that has really, really good kitchen and good bathrooms, you'll be amazed at how much interest it gets. So kitchens and bathrooms have always been very, very good additional to a property. You have to really put good work in them. Uh, of course, sizes of bedrooms are important as well. But if you wanted something that would differentiate you, your house or your property from the neighbors, it's usually your bathroom and your kitchen. What makes a good bathroom and what makes a good kitchen? Uh, a good kitchen should be one uh, that uh, has cabinetry. Cabinetry, it's very, very important for especially people who are cooking a lot. Um, you want a house, especially now, most the new concept of building is one that that um, encourages not just one person being in the kitchen, so that the kitchen is an open space. So you want an open space kitchen where you can interact with people as you're cooking. Uh, you need open stoves. Uh, you also need uh, a kitchen where you can cook and eat on the same kitchen. The, the story of dining is long gone now. People are hardly building houses with dining anymore. It just seemed like the kitchen is one big kitchen where it allows for sitting area and eating area all at the same time. So if you are asking for a good modern kitchen, it will be one that has a good refrigeration system. Uh, that has pretty good aeration because if you're cooking there, you want the air to get out of uh, the house quickly, so it's fresh. A lot of lighting, uh, cabinetries are very, very important that I mentioned. And you probably, maybe in Kenya, you probably want to have maybe a gas line as well as electric line for cooking. Um, uh, lots of shelves. So I would say, I would say it does boil down to preference. But uh, what I do know, if people are looking at modern style, they'll be looking at more like an open concept kitchen that allows you to cook and talk to your kids or the guests, the TV is right across there. That is what I see that a lot of people are looking at right now. Mm. And the bathroom? Uh, the bathroom, uh, uh, good stones. <laughs> good stones. And let me tell you, there's a conversation you're never going to get into when it comes to, to bathrooms. It's the shower heads. The ladies get to pick that. Don't ask me why, but the ladies pick that. You never pick it, and if you pick it, they'll bring what they want, okay? So you want good shower heads, good taps, good drainage, and most important to me, I think uh, good good lighting in the bathroom and where there's enough um, space, uh, where there's in and flow. You don't want a, a bathroom that uh, cannot allow for air to go in and out because then it becomes tough and becomes mold and it starts to have a weird smell, you know. But a lot of space. We need bathrooms that are probably as big as our living room sometimes. That is a good bathroom to me. I want a place where once I take a shower, I can sit down, dry myself, uh, you know, I can hang my, wood, my robe somewhere. There's a mirror there. Maybe one more step there and I have my suits and everything. That's a good bathroom. But we know we can't have that every day. So we have to be back to our small ones. But most important, uh, something that has good lighting, mm. uh, good aeration, and uh, hot and cold, hopefully, and good shower heads. Mm. That's as basic as it gets. And I think maybe a he's on hers or hers and hers or him and him. Who knows? 
Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that conversation. We got, we, we've, we've got a lot of things, uh, you know. I, I remember there is a time that the government said that each and every house that is built in Nairobi today must have uh, a provision for um, an area, TV aerial and uh, internet. I don't know if that has been done. I don't think they do it. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. But what are some of the things that 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 are must for for house? Yeah. Like the is it called the utilities? Yeah. What are some of the things that you should have in a house? Yeah. So so in um, in America, for example, a house uh, the first thing that a house must have, it has to have a kitchen space that allows for food to be cooked. Warm food can be cooked, so a stove. Or, uh, um, but it, it, let's say a stove or or some cooking equipment. Um, uh, second, most important thing, fridge must be there. So if we are going to sell houses, a fridge and a stove has to be there to make. Oh, so it, that should come with that selling comes the house. With the house comes should come with the house. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I find very important, very underrated in our society here, is carbon monoxide. There has to be every house should have a carbon monoxide detector. Yeah, carbon monoxide must be there and a fire alarm in every every dwelling. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, carbon what, monoxide. We, yes. And uh, and um, fire a fire alarm. It's very very important. But there are another thing that I've noticed that we don't have in Kenya is a fire escape. We don't have fire escaping. Most of our houses are actually burglar proof. So most of our houses, once they are locked from outside, it can take very long for somebody to try and even come in and evacuate anybody. So we need we need um, we need uh, fire escapes. Those are fire things. escape is the one that is used for people escaping the fire or people who are coming to rescue in 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 in, in case of fire outbreak. Uh, it's it's actually for people who are looking to escape. So, for example, there's a fire in a 10-story building. Is there a fire escape for him? You know, when you do that, maybe the power has gone. You can't use the lifts anymore. Uh, is there any other entrance or, or exit in this, in this particular facility? Is there maybe some type of manual? Uh, I've seen uh, in some countries, they have ladders, but they just zigzag along the building from top to bottom. Uh, it could help when there's no power and there's something happening in a big building. You need to be able to have other access that are probably not uh, electric controlled. Maybe you know at that time maybe the these, the fires consume the electric units in that property. So those are very important, and we don't have them, and uh, we don't have them in our laws or provision, and those are very important, you know. And if you're building your own house, let's say yeah. just a condo or a mansionette or yeah. something like that, I don't even know the difference whether yeah. a yeah. mansionette is a condo or they're <laughs> different things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you're building your dead capital, as they say, um, uh, you know, things like, like uh, carbon monoxide and fire detectors, they can actually be bought. And you can put one maybe in your hallways. Yeah, I see yeah. Google selling them yes. for cheap, like one, $150. Very cheap. They shouldn't even be that expensive. They should be cheaper than that. But the, the Kitambo, we used to like build a whole lot of stuff to, to, to send smoke. But now you just need little gadgets to sense the smoke. Very, yeah, very small gadgets. So they when they are, when they are, when you, when, when, realtors are building houses in America, mm -hmm. which, which, which sort of uh, uh, carbon detectors do they use? The elaborate ones or the just the small ones? They, they, the small ones. They actually just are fixed on top of the of the building, but they come with every home. A house is considered inhabitable without one. In the United States? Yes. So if you have one, carbon monoxide must be there. Uh, 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 fire detector has to be there. And they make terrible noise. In some houses, uh, they actually have fire sprinklers already installed in the house. I think even in Kenya here I've seen some. Yeah. But yeah, but if you touch that thing, it sprays water and foam properly in that area. So it can help you stop fire right away. So those are some of the things that, that as a country we need to move towards. Um, the other things um, are uh, maybe uh, exhaust in the house. Uh, a kitchen has to have proper ex uh, chimneys or way to exhaust if you're cooking so that air can come. So you know, if you go to people's houses, some houses, when you leave, you came there dressed very well, but you smell <laughs> like, you're like, wow, that's, that smells like chicken or a bubble yeah. or whatever. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's because you need good aeration in the house. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the internet. 
Uh, the internet uh, now comes when you either are going to have it in the house or the kids are going to bother you to get one every single day. So, But yeah, it's important to have those because uh, there are things in your house sometimes that may operate with them. There could be uh, things like your cameras uh, or just your electric systems that need those. So th- those are basic things that are going to be needed on a modern times and modern day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy is selling. If you want to, if, to, if you are to sell a uh, property here in Kenya, mm-hmm. wh- how would you do, you do? you do it different, or you'll just follow the way the Kenyans are doing it? I don't. Yeah, I, uh, I have, uh, I have always had a harder time because uh, the one thing in America, uh, we have trained to absolutely be customer centric. You know, uh, first thing you do before you sell a house, you sign what is called a buyer's agreement with your uh, buyer. Even though in America, the people that pay realtors are actually the sellers, but you are obligated by law to work for the, for the buyer. Which means, whatever question you ask must always favor your buyer. And it's signed. And if you do, if you do otherwise, the buyers are going to sue you. And they're going to sue you for good money. $50,000 and up. And they will get it. So uh, one of the things that I do like about America is they, they found a way to have uh, the seller pay the realtors, but those realtors are working on behalf of the buyer, 100%. And legally, you are actually obligated to work for them. So it, it kind of makes the buying and selling uh, balanced. Because you see, when somebody is, 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 is selling you a property, they have so much knowledge and power about what they are selling, they know. But if they are the ones also paying your realtor, then you really have no luck. So in this case, they made sure that the realtors are actually paid by the seller. However, you are obligated, your fiduciary duty is to to the buyer. Mm. Mm. Let's talk to let's talk about renting. Renting in Kenya is... Uh, my, my last neighbor has not been given his, his deposit. <laughs> up to now i saw him the other day mm-hmm. making noise in the in the in the group mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh, if you want to leave that place make sure you sit on your to- on your on your on your deposits because mm-hmm. this man is not going to return it to you mm-hmm. whether you keep your neck he's not going to give it to you okay i don't know if you know about renting in kenya but renting in kenya is pretty straightforward is it yeah because you come mm-hmm. The landlord doesn't know anything about you. He doesn't know whether you work, Mm -hmm. doesn't know whether you're a thief, doesn't know anything, doesn't want to care, doesn't want to ask, Mm -hmm. doesn't ask for any any letter from your from your from your former landlord, Mm -hmm. takes the deposits Mm -hmm. and you're in. How does it work in America? Oh man. In terms of renting. In America is very different. Um uh, in America, the first thing they do is you have a, a rental history. So through your social security and everything, every property you rent will show your history of payment and also your history of habitation in this particular uh, property. So the, the, the realtor who is working on behalf of your landlord will look at that first. They'll also look at your income. They are going to look at probably your contact sometimes. They can search you. They're going to look at your uh, uh, your credit. They see how you pay other things other than the, just the debt. Just, yeah. Just so the yeah, so uh, yeah um, a landlord in America has a lot but of... But I, I think this is this is invasion of pro- uh, privacy. When they go looking for all this private information, who gives them the right to look at all this uh, information? There are agencies whose job, because America is a society where uh, it's not cash fast, it's credit fast. So their institutions are actually built for you to be able to take a peep and look and see how somebody's credit worth is. And that is how that country has been able to move forward without a lot of capital. Because if you are credit worthy, if your credit shows that Jagero pays his debt, then I can say I can afford to give Jagero uh, $50,000 and I know he'll pay it because he has a history of paying. So you could look at it as an invasion of privacy, but you could also look at it as something that enables you to access cash that or resources that otherwise you, you would not have had. Like here, Kenya, when people have money, they have money. In America, some people are credit rich. They don't have cash, but they have all the resources. They can access a lot of resources because their credit shows that 
this person has clean credit. So that's where that is. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we were talking about the the landlord. He yeah. the the he will start looking for what you do blah blah blah. How yeah. does it how does it work from there? Yeah, so from there uh, a landlord uh, comes, vets you, puts your social security number, they see where you've lived before, your rental history, if it's good or bad, if you've missed some payment, if you owe money somewhere, they will know in the rental uh, parts of of the conversation they are also going to know uh what your general history is paying your credit cards and things like that those to them are characteristics of either a good or a bad tenant uh in kenya i think uh it would make sense uh that uh landlords get a little bit of 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 idea of who they are renting for because guess what uh you could be renting to to somebody who's dangerous to the community you could be renting to a Somebody who molests kids. Can you imagine you're renting and your next door neighbor has been chased left, right, center because there are probably people who are pedophiles or have some type of degenerate behaviors. So there's some things that may work in your favor and some are not. You know, the society is an open society. If you choose to live within society, there's some loss of privacy that you will experience. But I do think uh, landlords, uh, tenants too on the other side, should be able to have recourse in case in your friend's case if uh you think you left a house in good order uh and there's no need for your deposit to be attached to have a rent court where you can go and claim the rent court and show look here yeah, this is how I've left the house it's in good order or at least this is what's reasonable it's clean there's no debris in it there's nothing dilapidated when I'm living so I need my deposit back so there is need to be a little bit more development because it seemed like the rental space in Kenya and the matatu space in Kenya have just stayed for years there's no changes in them and uh, they are largely unregulated because they are they are person to person driven so the government needs to come in put uh, um, uh, put regulations and uh, of how a landlord should conduct themselves and how a tenant should conduct themselves and laws should be passed on how how this relationship works mm. yeah it's very concerning even in term in security wise mm-hmm. because right now mm-hmm. i know the government doesn't know where i live mm, maybe they do maybe they don't hopefully they don't <laughs> mm, they 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 will they will look at uh, where my where my uh, where my 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 base station pings at night mm. they will have a general idea yeah. of where i live yeah, but, they but i don't think they know that i live at royal residences house number 3 yes 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 because i have never put that one anywhere anywhere yeah you see like that then you see mm-hmm. and i pay rent via mpesa you can imagine and it is not say <laughs> it's not saying anywhere rent uh-huh. it just is just money transferred to the landlord wow and the landlord uh, can actually say that i owe him i sent him money to bury his brother he could say it, it could be anything it could be anything it could be a gift every week it could be a gift <laughs> <laughs> so I f- yeah. I feel like that is really really concerning as a country yeah. that so many things that should have been fixed yeah remain unfixed. Yeah. If the government wants to know where I am right now, if mm-hmm. I am if I'm accused of a serious crime, mm-hmm. they should be able to come and knock at my door. True or false? True, true. But they can't. Mm-hmm. Today, mm-hmm. I can decide in the evening today put my stuff in a lorry go to Gidurai 45 take a home mm-hmm. pay in cash and get in there and nobody knows anything. and nobody knows yeah the landlord doesn't the landlord in Gidurai doesn't know mm-hmm. that i am from royal residences nope. house number 3 yeah. they don't know that my landlord is called leaky money mm-hmm. they don't know okay. all they see is the three months rent and voila come and live with us well uh there's there's need for regulation a bit of it maybe mm. not too much just enough to protect people's privacy but enough to make the industry move forward uh you know we we always have to 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 live uh as you walk one step you move forward everything should be this way uh, including transportation including uh you know the rental space home ownership uh it seems like once people are making money in Kenya people are just quiet and they then unwilling to change anything you know but um think about for example if we are going to 
to even do um, something that allows homes. Let's say, let's say you want to do a census to figure out exactly um, whether people are satisfied with their housing. You know, uh, government can't send a census and be able to really say, "Hey, 60% of our people are satisfied," or "60% of our people are underhoused," or you know, all those are documents. Those should be in the bureau of of, of, of statistics here. And you should be able to find those information so that you can move. Uh, even if you are to change a big demographic of this country a certain way, you have to know how they live and where they live to be changing that. So we are always lagging behind. And uh, uh, things that we could fix. Things that are very easy. It just needs a new idea and a strong person, and they change them. You know, um, it shouldn't be too hard to fix things like that, especially this landlord issue. Uh, that has to change. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Innocent. Um, Always a pleasure talking to you. Same here, Chief. You said you're interested in the in the Kenyan real estate. Uh, I am definitely always interested in every real estate everywhere. Um, Kenyan real estate is, is as interesting as dynamic. The only biggest issue that I have for it is that uh, we hyper-speculate things. We do not have the right value of what this property cost. Secondly, we should make uh, uh, real estate in Kenya be part of somebody's portfolio of income so that if you have a home, you can use it as part of your wealth and assets so that you can actually use it to build other homes or do any other thing. Right now, because we don't do proper valuation for properties, or we just over-speculate, even banks cannot be comfortable to say, hey, we can give Jagero $100 million because he has that house in Runda, and he can use that $100 million to build this empire he wants. So if we do all these things properly, you're able to use your home not only just as residence, but also as part of your asset that you can use to borrow because it's equity, you can borrow from it. So those things are there. Those are things, things that... And so uh, then people don't turn around and call your own home dead capital. Thank you. <laughs> because guess what? The bank can come after it and recover that money from the house or from the home. And that should be enough for you to even go to the bank and say, look, yeah, I have this beautiful beautiful building and I'd, I'd like to get uh, 15 million from you guys and you can attach my house and I'll pay it within 30 years or I'll pay it within 15 or whatever and, and they give you something reasonable mm. yeah so uh, we have ways to go it shouldn't just be dead capital of residence it should be the main asset that we have in America 65% uh, of assets in America are in their homes 65% mm. of their wealth is in their homes they own so I don't see why we can't be that way too. And yeah. people own homes here. Yeah. So no more dead capital. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Innocent. All right, people of the internet, thank you very much for tuning in to Dialogues with Jagero. I was with Innocent Realta. Is that the way to pronounce it? Absolutely. You got it right. Yeah. And if you have uh, questions, you can always ask him. Mm -hmm. You can always, uh, you know, uh, react to what he has said. Mm -hmm. If there are things that he has left, you can always add them. Uh, but all in all, we are having a, um, a podcast called Dialogues with Jagero. And if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, you can hit on that notification bell so that whenever we have a bold conversation like this one, you can always tune in. We have our socials, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, X, all of them. Please follow us for more like this. Thank you very much. Until another episode. Bye for now. Thank you. Great.